Hi, I'm Mike. Over the last few days, we've been dealing with the biggest snowstorm, well, so far this winter, with about a foot of new snow and winds up to about 40 miles an hour and temps down to almost 10 below zero. Today, we're gonna see how the ranch deals with a blizzard and the process of starting to dig out on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Happy New Year, and welcome back to our Wyoming life. You know, any time around here, we never know what to expect. And this year is actually proving to be no different. Thanks for joining us for another year. And if you're new, please subscribe and join us as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Now, we knew we had a storm on the way. We were forecasted for up to nine inches of snow overnight, but waking up, we were surprised by how it affected the entire area. All of the roads in the county were closed. There was no going to town. There was no going anywhere. As snow, along with high winds, had created some major drifting. And that drifting can cause some interesting things. Some areas of the ranch are bare. Some are plagued with four foot snow drifts. And it's those drifts that make things fun, but can also cause problems for animals. We don't get to take a snow day. Everybody still needs fed, water still need checked, and more importantly, animals have to be able to get to the food and the water. Although I would much rather stay inside, we have to venture out and do our chores. The process of feeding, well, it isn't much different, just a little bit more difficult. We keep hay close to the house for just such situations, but sometimes getting to that hay can even be a battle. Luckily, we have the tractor. The snow is light enough that the giant drifts don't cause too much trouble, although a running start does help. The bales we keep close by are stacked over by Aaron's high tunnels, which seem to have avoided a majority of the drifting. And because the storm is still ongoing, there isn't much point in trying to clear any of the snow yet. Anything we open up will drift back in, and once the storm passes, we'll have plenty of time to move snow around. For now, our goal is just to get the cows fed, watered, and animals checked. Each patch of bare ground, blown somewhat clean, leads to another drift, some bigger than others, but we move steadily through to get the cows their food. They tend to stay in the barn in weather like this, but food always brings them out. And with cold temperatures, we're gonna actually feed extra as we can count on digestion to create body heat. The more they eat, the warmer they're going to be. And that's one luxury that we can afford to give them today. All told, they're going to eat about 4,500 pounds of hay today. Hopefully enough to last them a little while and keep them warm. We also check not only the breeding cows, but other cows and animals around the ranch. With the snow and the drifts, the only way to get around the ranch today is with the tractor and it becomes our sole source of transportation. The pigs are fed, and steers and calves and other corrals are checked on. As drifting happens, it can sometimes limit access to water for cows, and the only thing we can do today is make sure they have an area open enough for them to get through. Tanks that are currently filled with snow are filled with water, and everybody may not be happy, but at least they're fed, and we can wait out the rest of the storm. But the work isn't done, of course. Days like today, lend itself perfectly to getting something done in the shop. And today we're gonna to work on the gator, while it can't go anywhere, and while it's snowed in. Our gator is a 2011 825i. It's been used a lot around the ranch, and Gilbert originally bought it for himself, then decided that he liked his little gator better. It's much better than going out in the winter on a four-wheeler to check cows, especially at night during calving, and it has been a godsend. One thing that I've never liked about it, however, are the lights. We've added a spotlight to the top of it to help at night, but you might as well hold a flashlight out the window. Now is the time to fix that problem before calving and before we're going to be out checking cows at night. For Christmas, my mother-in-law gave me a new light for the gator. It's a 24 inch LED light bar. The plan is to mount it to the gator and I thought about putting it up high, but I'm not sure how it'll obstruct the spotlight. 
so the plan is to mount it down lower on the grill guard. Luckily, the installation and assembly is pretty much idiot proof, which may be why my mother-in-law got it for me in the first place. The first step is to install the switch that'll control the light bar. We're gonna mount it in the dash and we're gonna make a three quarter inch hole to accommodate it. Using a step drill bit, we can drill into the faceplate of the dash until we can get the wiring through and pop the switch into place. Next up is power and that's gonna come off the battery. Now I could wire it into the switch, but I don't know if I'll ever need the lights when the gator's not running. So we're gonna wire it directly to the battery. Other accessories are wired this way, including the dome light and the harness for the cake feeder, but there's room for one more set of wires. The harness that was included is nice. It's all inclusive with a fuse and the plugs needed, so not much wiring is really required. After hooking it up to the battery, wires are ran to the front where we can test it and see if it works. Now it's time to mount it to the gator. The brackets are attached to the light using supplied bolts and then we can attach them to the grill guard, marking our place for the holes, then drilling it out and attaching it with quarter inch bolts. This thing's gonna be bouncing around a lot, so let's not forget lock washers, although I'm sure I'm still gonna to have to remember to retighten it after a few hours of rattling around. After getting the uh, light mounted, it was off to work in the attic, but I can't show you any of that because we're planning on debuting a new live stream studio and office in our next live stream, which will actually take place this Thursday the 3rd at 7 p.m. I can tell you it's gonna be done and it looks amazing, mostly due to Aaron, who's much better at designing things like that than I am. I do hope that you can pop in and join us as we plan on having a guest here with us who without his help, we never would have got it done. The storm has stopped, the sun is now shining, and I'm happy to say that the cows made it through without any problem. As for the ranch, it's time to start digging out. Again, the tractor is all that can move around. Even the bobcat would probably get stuck, and after attaching the bucket, we can start the process of moving snow and making paths. Time is sometimes a short supply around here, but a snow day for us just means more time to get something else done that might have waited until we really needed it. Trying to stay ahead of the project list is just as much a part of the list as marking things off, and thanks for coming along today. There's plenty more snow to move, and I can't wait to get the gator out and try out this new light. I guess that's gonna have to wait until dark. Again, I hope that you can join us Thursday for the live stream. Uh, they're always a lot of fun and a chance for us to get to hang out with you. And hopefully being in a new space, the whole thing goes off without a hitch. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that. Thanks again. Be sure to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. And if you don't mind, do me a favor and comment below what your favorite video of 2018 was. Maybe one that sticks in your mind. Maybe it was a project list video. Maybe it was anything else. But I think it'd be fun to see what you guys really like, and then we can do more of that. I'm gonna go move some more snow, and I'll see you Thursday. Until then, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life. <laughs>